Shalom, Shalom, Koholayim La, Albanawa, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahawa Shai, Bahashim, Rekak Radash. Double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akium out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners, and Shalom to the Akwaf, sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Now, I wanted to bring a lesson out on uh, us being balanced towards our brothers and our sisters, uh, being brotherly, showing, you know, that uh, Israelite love, you know, that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah wanted us to show in his eyes, man. And also, you know, to to attempt every day to be as balanced as you can with judging brothers, how you treat brothers, etc., man. Because we don't want to be tyrants, man. You know, and that's going to be the basis of this lesson, man. Be not a tyrant. So, matter of fact, let's start off with the definition of tyrant. Be not a tyrant, man. Tyrant. All right, it says, an absolute ruler unrestrained by law or constitution. A ruler who exercises absolute power oppressively or brutally. Oppressive ruler in the harsh use of the authority of power, man. Tyrant. So tyrant. Let's go to the Google definition. Tyrant. Tyrant. It says right here, a cruel and oppressive ruler. So we don't want to be, we don't want to have this, you know, under our belt, man. We don't want to be a cruel and oppressive ruler towards our beloved brothers and sisters that are, you know, are seeking to be uh, 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 under the wings of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man, that are seeking to be, you know, uh, of the house of the water, man. Okay, we have to have balance in everything that we do, man. And that's on, you know, how we treat one another. You know, and, and, and furthermore, let me say this too, man, there's no respective persons when it comes to judgment. No respective persons, man. Period. Okay, you know, you might, you might have to, you know, uh, 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 rebuke one of your brothers that you love dearly, man. Okay? But there's no respect of persons, man. And also, too, you, we have to be balanced in this, man, because you might have younger brothers rebuking, rebuking older brothers, man. And I'm, when I say older brothers, I mean brothers with, you know, hoary heads, okay, with uh, gray hairs on their head and stuff like that, man. Okay? And that, that also falls back into this definition again, too, man. Tyrant. Tyrant, man. We don't want to be like that, man. We don't want to be labeled as that, man. So let me let me shut the hell up and let's let the uh, scripture speak. This is going to be a uh, Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse five, and it reads this: Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Okay, so when you examine yourself, you're not just examining yourself on your doctrine. You examine yourself all all way all the all way all the way around. Salak here, all the way around, man. In every single avenue of life, man, and everything how you present yourself, how you conduct yourself, you, you need to examine yourself thoroughly, man. Thoroughly examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except. Ye be reprobates, man. So we're supposed to be examining ourselves to make sure we're moving correctly. To make sure it's a lock you. To make sure we're out here doing, doing uh, 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 these things, how you how about Shimmy how Shah wanted us to do them, man. Okay, to make sure that we're uh, 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 not uh, being um, over righteous, man. Okay, because you know you have uh, 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 younger brothers older over older brothers, and you have older brothers over younger brothers. Point blank, period, man. But regardless, we must make sure that we're being balanced on everything that we're doing, man. Okay. And again, there's no respect of persons when it comes to judgment, man. Salak, so Salak. So, so let's go ahead and continue, man. Let's go to, because uh, we need one another, man. Point blank, period. We we need one another, man. So with that being said, let's go here real quick. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, and it reads this. Two are better than one, but they have a good reward for their labor for if for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe 
to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up. So we're supposed to be there to help one another. Okay, never you see your brother slipping, man. Hey, man, correct him, man. But before you, before he, before he, before he, before he slip uh, 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 all the way, man. Okay, it's lucky. I'm excited, man, because I, I, I've been this lesson been on my mind for about two or three days, man. But we're supposed to be there for one another, man. So if a brother rebukes you, man, you gotta take that, man. Whatever, whatever it is, man, it just, and that's love too, man. Your brother see you, 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 you committing some type of transgression against your how about shim yow shot going off, and he correcting you. That's love, man. So you can acknowledge it and, and and repent, okay. But again, we must be balanced, man. We must not be tyrants, man, okay. So don't you know take it to take it to the heart if a brother you know rebuke you, man. Because when, when you get rebuked, there's no respect of persons, man. None. Especially if if you need if you need to get a, a rough rebuke, then hey, that's what the Lord wants you to get, man. Okay, but again, uh, uh, beloved Akin, we must be balanced in everything that we do, man. Okay? Period, man. All right, but let's, uh, let me read that uh, verse 10 again. For if they fall, so if you fall, a brother should be there to pick you up, man. Okay, spiritually, mentally, and physically, man. Okay, if a brother, if a brother, you know, seeing your spirit that you know he asked you that you are, oh no, I'm good, man, and he's sensing your spirit that you that you ain't, man, they put that brother to the side, man, and say, look, man, what's going on, man? Holler at me, man. I'm I'm here for you, brother. I, I sense in your spirit that something's wrong, man. What's going on, brother? For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up, man. And we're here to help one another, man. And if you ain't here to, 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 to you know, to, to help your brother, to love your brother, to, to, to be there for your brother, man, rebuke your brother if, if need be, whatever the case is, man, and be sincere and truthful and humble about it, man. Have humility, man. Don't be no damn nigga, man. Okay? Don't just be happy and, you know, uh, over-righteous and excited that you have authority over other men. Okay? And also too, Salakia, also too, man. Uh, one of the the, the beloved uh, uh, up and coming elders told me, man. You know, sometimes when when brothers get rebuked, because another brother had told me, like even when you even when you're correct and you're not wrong, don't say nothing, just take it. And, and when, when when stuff like that comes abroad, that's a demon on you, man. And 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 and, and brothers have to acknowledge that too, man. That's why that's why I read that verse of scripture, Second Corinthians thirteen verse five. Examine yourselves, man. You should be examining yourself before you go to sleep and when you wake up to make sure that you're being correct and balanced in the eyes of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Well, Salaki, let's continue. Matter of fact, let's go to Colossians, man, because we got we to gotta take heed to everything, man. We must apply this to our everyday life. Colossians chapter 4. Uh, yeah, let's read verses 5 to 6. That'll, that'll get to the point. Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, and it reads this. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Okay? Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time. So look, we're always supposed to walk in this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And how can we walk in the wisdom? Matter of fact, the Spirit told me to get this. Because you can't walk in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding if without the Spirit, man. So this is... Uh, uh, I want to say Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1. Con. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. For into a malicious soul shall not... So like, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Let me read that again for you, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter... Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So look, to, to have this, this characteristic right here. Tyrant. A tyrant. The wisdom and the spirit is not going to dwell in you, man. Because this is a sin, man. We're not, we're not supposed to be a cruel and oppressive ruler, man. Okay? So let's go back to Colossians. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 again. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time, so you know you might have new brothers just coming in that that don't have, you know, uh, uh, all the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as you do, man. But you need to always remember you was in that same position too, man. 
Okay, don't get, you know, happy and, you know, uh, over-righteous and, you know, uh, become a super a super Hebrew, you know, whatever the case may be, man, because you get the chance to rebuke somebody or to show somebody that you have that that wisdom. Nah, man, be balanced, man. Be humble. Why do you think Elder Apostle Gabar is always talking about having humility, always, talk, always talking about being humble, man? Okay, he's, he's not saying it just to say it. Okay, apply it to your everyday life, man, in every aspect of life, man. Okay? And just like when a, when, a, when a person comes up to the camp or on the comment board, like Elder Apostle or Ram Lop said, we can't really, we need, we need to, uh, you know, take heed and, and be patient with dealing with these people, especially the newcomers, man. Because again, walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Okay? We got to be balanced, man, because as, as it says, Proverbs 11, verse 1, a just weight is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah's balance, but an unjust weight is, is an abomination. Roughly paraphrasing, man. Verse 6, let your speech be always with, always with grace. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So look, man, how do we get that, that, that season, man? Through the power and spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by having the, 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 the spirit on us, man. Walking in wisdom, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, man. So everything that we're going to speak is going to be seasoned with salt. It's going to have, you know, a, a, a beautiful, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? A beautiful meaning behind it. Comfort. Okay? Edification through our words, man. Okay? No oppression. No vexation towards our brothers and our sisters, man. Okay? Because, again, there is no respect of persons when you're being rebuked. Okay? But brotherly love, man. Hey, look, man. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on reading this scripture. Matter of fact, let's go here real quick. Matter of fact, yeah, let's go here real quick. Uh, Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus or, or Sirach, chapter 6. And I'm going to read verse 5. Sweet language will multiply friends. So you need to know how to speak to your brother, man. And like I said, when you're rebuking a man, there's no respect of persons, man. Regardless if you're giving it to him rough, hey, amen. The Lord wants you to give him a rough rebuke. But when you when you conversating with brothers, man, you ain't you ain't supposed to be no damn asshole, man. Okay, and and, and especially if, if not if you have a high position or if you feel like you're better than somebody else. Hey, come on, man. Jake, man, Jake need to get out that, get out that, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say it, man, Salaki for the language, that bullshit uh, uh, spirit, man, okay, you, you, you need to stop that shit, man, okay, uh, Sirach 6, verse 5, again, sweet language will multiply friends, know how to talk to a man, okay, know how to talk to a man, because I'm going to tell you like this, and, and, and you, Akiem know this, man, you wouldn't talk crazy to a man in the world when you was in the world. That, that would automatically start a damn fight or some type of violence, man. So why in the hell would you talk to your brother like that in the truth, man? Okay, in any way. Again, rebuking somebody is a rebuke, man. I'm just talking about in general. Sweet language will multiply friends and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. And this is towards the brotherhood, man. Towards the hopeful elect, man. Okay, we, sh we, sh we show the love with actions too, man. And especially speaking towards one another, man. You ain't going to talk to your brother anyway. You ain't going to treat, treat your brother like no nigga off the street, man. Okay? Period, man. And, and everything that I'm saying in every single lesson that I, put, that I put up, man, I'm talking to myself first and foremost. So this lesson and every other lesson, I'm talking to myself first and foremost. Because I'm going to tell you like this, I'm not going to talk to any of you brothers any type of damn way, man. Okay, I respect you and I expect respect back, period, man. Just, just as you do too. Okay, but let's continue, man. Yeah, matter of fact, let's go here. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. And, and how, however long this lesson is, however long it is, man. But I bet you, I bet you uh, for a fact that this lesson probably get like a, a certain amount of views and probably like 20 likes. Because Jake, Jake don't want to hear stuff like this. You know, uh, 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 the Israelite woman don't want to hear stuff like this, how to walk correctly. 
you know, in the eyes of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. They don't want to hear this, but as soon as I put up a video judging a woman or going off on a woman or, you know, showing, showing some type of folly and then doing less than all that, or oh, that'll get like a thousand views and, you know, a hundred likes. But st but edification like this that, that we need, they, they, you know, Israel disregarded. So we're going to see. We're going to see. Proverbs 29, and I'm going to read verse 23. And it reads this. A man's pride shall bring him low. So we, we're not supposed to be prideful. We're not supposed to have that pride demon on us, man. We're supposed to be humble. The only power, the only creator that can be proud is Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That is it, man. That was not created for us, man. We are nobody. Why? It says in, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, why is earth and ashes proud, man? Why the hell are you proud? So you should not have no proud demon on you, man. And the Lord is going to destroy you if you don't recognize that and correct it, man. And repent. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. But do you hear that? But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Why do you think, again, why do you think Elder Apostle Gabar always talking about having humility? Okay, because the word humble comes from humility. Salaki, forgive me, man. Forgive me. But yeah, why do you think Elder Apostle Gabar is always talking about having hum humility, being humble, man? It's all through the scriptures. Let me read this again, man. Proverbs 29, verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. We're supposed to have a very, very humble spirit, man. Okay? Period, man. And you're supposed to have a humble spirit and it's truth towards your brothers. Okay? Hey, look, man. We're supposed to be able to control our, 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 our wrath, all that, man. Okay? As, as it state in the books of Proverbs, a man that is slow to wrath is uh, 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 slightly, um, roughly paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly, but can, can control a city or something like that. Now, if any brother know that there's two scriptures to that. If any brother know it, matter of fact, it's so like you. Just, 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 you know, because the spirit is on me to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out myself. See if I can find it real quick. I got my sword, bes sword beside me. So let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. Hey, okay, one second. Let me see if I can find it so I can uh, just read it real quick myself. Give me one second. Uh, I might, I know I got it marked in here. Give me one second. Bear with me, Israel. Here it is right here. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Woo! It's another one too. One second. Proverbs 25, verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So look, man, we need to take heed, man. Okay, because hey, look, man, this, let, me, let me read another one, man. Proverbs 14, verse 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalted folly. So look, man, humility, humble, sincere, Slow to anger. Okay? Let's continue, man. That, that, it, that was just the spirit, man. Matter of fact, <laughs> let's go ahead real quick. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If you have a problem with a brother... Hash it out accordingly, correctly. Don't dwell on it. Okay, as the scriptures say, as the scriptures state, and we're going to get that right now. I think that's Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, yep. <coughs> so like Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So don't you ain't supposed to go to sleep. If you have a, 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 a issue with a brother, 
Okay, you need to resolve that, man. If you have a problem with the brother, you need to resolve that, man. Okay, because love worketh no ill towards his neighbor, man. Okay, and as this, let me let me go back to it. Romans 13, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law, man. We're supposed to love one another, man. And that's a commandment that Yahweh Shai gave us. And we're going to get that. But before we do, let's go here real quick before we do. Let's, before we get that, let's go here. Matter of fact, we'll probably get that a little bit later, but we're going to get it. Trust me, we're going to get it. Let's jump back to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs 18, verse 24, and it reads this. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. Okay, not no daggone tyrant. Okay, a man that have friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So let me, let, matter of fact, here goes a beautiful example of this scripture right here. Now, let's say you and your brother, your blood brother, you got the same father, same mother. Okay, but it really doesn't matter as long as you got the same father. That's your actual full brother, your blood brother. And you see your blood brother, you know, going off doing something to another brother. And you correct your brother and take the other brothers, which is not your blood brother's side. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to correct your own blood brother that you grew up with and lived with and di loved dearly to, to side with another brother to correct your brother and let your brother know that he's wrong? Are you able to do that, man? And, and stand firm for that, man? And again, that, 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 goes into, that also goes into there is no respecter of persons. That's a prime example, man. Correcting your own blood brother for, uh, let's say, rebuking a brother, and he and the brother would, has done nothing wrong, and the rebuke was, you know, uh, 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 out of a tyrant mode. You know, it, the brother should not have, shouldn't have been rebuked. So, are you going to take the, the 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 brother's side that's getting rebuked wrongfully against your own blood brother? So, let me read this scripture again, man. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. So, we must prove ourselves one to another. We must show ourselves brotherly, have love, friendly, sweet language. Okay, so rock six and five, man. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let that sink in, man. Let that sink in. I'm going to go here. First Thessalonians. And I got a few more that we're going to close out. First Thessalonians chapter five. <clears throat> Verses 14, verses 14 to 15, and it reads this. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. So look, man, we're supposed to warn uh, 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 those that are unruly, man, especially amongst our brothers, man. If you, if you start to get a demon on you, we're supposed to rebuke you, man. Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. So we're supposed to be patient towards all men, and especially our brothers, man. Okay, because, you know, I mean, hey, look, man, just like the elder apostles, elder bishops, and the other elders on down say they see stuff and they see it, you, th you think other brothers don't see it too, man? You know, like jealousy and brothers, you know, uh, uh, you know, don't like the, that this brother's getting uh, some, some, some type of uh, recognition or recognized for, you know, something that he's done or... Just whatever the case may be, you, you think that, you know, uh, uh, not only the elder apostles uh, on down see it, you think other brothers don't see stuff like that too? Yes, man. That you, that you catch an attitude because this brother's getting recognized for something that he did uh, 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 from, from his heart and, and through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shai. Verse 15, verse 15, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. Okay, Yahweh Shem Yahweh is going to bring that vengeance, man. Oh yes, we're going to get a chance to, uh, 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 you know, put our hands to work. But towards your brother, man, you're not supposed to be rendering no evil towards your brothers in this truth, man. Okay, period, man. Period, man. Okay, just like Elder Apostle or Ramlop said, you should not, you should never, ever, ever put your hands on another brother. As David said, who, who am I to touch the Lord's anointed, man? You should never, ever be able to, 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 to think or even attempt to put your hands on another brother, man. Or, 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 or to entice or to, uh, or to try, uh, try to trigger a brother to put his hands on you, man. 
That's demon shit, man. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That's clear, cut, and straight to the point. Because look, man, we're supposed to have this, man. What did King David said? the type of love that him and uh, Jonathan had? What did he say? I mean, let's get the scriptures. Second Samuel chapter 1. And this is one of my favorite scriptures when it comes towards uh, the unity of brethren, man. Second Samuel chapter 2. So like in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant has thou been unto me. Thy love, thy love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of women. That's how strong and how, how, how much of a bond and how much love that Jonathan and David had towards one another. Jonathan loved David so much, he went against his own father. And again, th th that's another prime example that I just gave you against, you know, the, 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 your blood brother against your blood brother. Will you, will you stand against him if, he, if he's wrong? And that's a prime example with Jonathan did standing against his own father, for, for King David, his brother, man. This is a pure example right here in the scriptures, man. Are, are you willing to have love like this, man, towards your brother, man? To go against this, Jonathan went against his own father because David did nothing wrong. He was innocent. And he, st he stood up for David, man. And Saul knew it. Saul knew it, man. Do you have that type of love for your brother right now in this truth, man? Do you? Be not over-righteous, brothers, man. Really examine yourselves, man. Let's get that scripture that I called earlier about uh, what Yahweh Shai said, man, that new commandment that he gave us, man. St. John chapter 13 verses 34 to 35 and it reads this a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another as i have loved you that ye also love one another by this by this by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another now, Yahweh Shah said in, in St. John chapter 17, verse 9, I pray for them, which is the, 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 the elect, the house of David, the predestinated lot, man. Okay, it's not talking about the whole nation. This scripture is not talking about the whole nation. It's talking about the, the hopeful elect, the ones that agree on the doctrine, that, that agree on everything. Ain't no if, ands, buts, or hold up, or what. Ain't none of that. Okay? This applies, Lord willing, to us. But this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another, man. Man, we got to practice this, brothers. We got to keep this going. Matter of fact, let's close out here. And before we, uh, what is that? Uh, 2 Corinthians. We're going to close out here. Matter of fact, Salakia. 1 Corinthians. Salakia, forgive me. Because we got to apply this too. We got to remember this too, man. Because it's like I said, man, brothers in higher positions, when new brothers come in or when brothers that's below you, just because you're in a higher position, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to let the Bible talk. I'm going to let this Bible talk like I always do. All right. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20, verses 22 to 26. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Let me read that again. Verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow 
more abundant honor, honor and our <clears throat> so like it and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our uh, so like it, I'm excited verse 24 for our comely parts have no need but the most high have tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism now let's look at that word schism real quick that there should be no schism what does that word schism mean let's get it real quick schism okay the word schism means a split or division between strongly opposite sections or parties sections or parties caused by differences in an opinion or belief a split or division between strongly opposite sections or parties caused by differences in opinion or belief man so again that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member should be honored, so like you, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Hey Amen. The scripture said it plain as day, man. I don't need to break that down. If you don't get it, go back and read it. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 22 to 26, man. So, man, look, man, be not a tyrant, man. Okay, that's that's not in our MO, that's not in our blueprint, man. Be not a tyrant, man. Tyrant. Tyrant. Okay. Man, we, we must practice brotherly love, man. And this is not aimed at nobody or saying that this person needs to do this. This per man, we all need to do this, man. Every single brother, man. Every single sister, man. Okay? And we're gonna see how many how how, how many Jakes and Eves take heed to this lesson and how many really ones, you know. Uh, required to gain knowledge more and more, man. But it's up to you, man. So Lord willing, I hope and I pray that this is edifying and uplifting and a faith booster to the hopeful elect. So with that, I'm just going to say, Shalom.